All right. We're now going to set the uh, the Viper up after uh, building it, so we can take it for a bit of a hoon. We have. Well, first thing we're going to do, we're going to go down to the CLI. If I go down to B to fight, and we're going to go down to the CLI, we're going to type BL for bootloader. Should go into DFU mode, which it has done. And we're going to go to update firmware. Now, we are going to use an, uh, a provided hex, one that I will link in the description. And this has a vastly improved anti-gravity code. It won't be in um, master until three point, oh, sorry, 4.3. Um, highly recommend using it for racing. It's extremely good. Now, if we get in here and select load firmware local, we're going to go down and find our hex. It's the one I've highlighted here in green. Open that. Now, really critical that the right target is up here in this box here. If you have the wrong target here, it will try and install the default settings. Um, so it has this is a universal target. All the targets now are what they call universal targets, but it's critical that this is set to the same target as your flight controller, otherwise you will um, you will install the wrong gyro and basic settings for the and timer settings and stuff for the flight controller. So check that's okay. Hit flash firmware. Right now, we'll see if she reboots. She's not, so we're going to power the um, power the repower the um, the flight controller. Plug it in, plug it out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, we connect. Fly custom defaults. Very important we do that. She's booting again. Okay, we've got a few issues here because the quad is not. Some things are not configured, so let's get in there and sort that out. First thing we're going to do is calibrate the accelerometer. If you're going to use the accelerometer, it has to be calibrated, otherwise the quad will not arm. That's a new safety feature in B to fight. Now we go to the ports tab now. When we soldered this thing up, when we, when we set up the flight controller with the um, different pads and stuff, we decided that we were going to use UART 1 for our RX. So that's our serial RX. UART 4 as the ESC sensor information and you up five is where we connected our smart audio so there's our there's our port set up save and reboot all right now let's go to configuration first thing i do is click reverse motor direction it's an f7 we want to run d shot 600 we're going to turn the esc sensor on we're going to turn bi-directional d shot on and we're going to turn down the min throttle idle to 4.5. Uh, this is because it's such a high KV motor and it won't do anything. It'll, uh, the, the idle will be a little bit too aggressive with this sort of KV. 8K is good. Uh, we'll keep the accelerometer, we're going to turn off those two. Um, we put the flight controller in backwards. So we're going to have to make this 180 in the yaw and the minimum arm angle needs to be 180 so that you can get the thing out of a tree or it can be armed when it's not entirely up the right way. Uh, we'll give it a name. Viper 2020 KV. Down here to serial based R receiver and then we're going to select crossfire. Everything else here is good. M mod OSD dynamic filter. Those are the things we want. We're going to save and reboot. Now 
Now again, it has failed to reboot itself properly, so unplug your cord, plug it back in. There we go. Now down here in the battery thing. Now, I may want to run this up 4.4. So we do run high volt, and we need to change this to 200. Um, it doesn't look like in testing that it's correct though, but that's what the manufacturer is claiming. This is uh, you'll have to um, work this number out yourself by testing it and doing the old milliamp hour in, milliamp hour out uh, method to adjust the um, adjust the amperage settings because for this new Acon, the number they've provided doesn't appear to be correct. So save that and. For the rest of the setups, I am going to use the tune that it, I can provide. Uh, this will be with the hex, provided with the hex. Now, if you were using the Foxy or F7, the Talon Fusion F7, or the new T-Motor F7, this tune will work for you um, super nice. Those are the recommended flight controllers that I would run in this setup right now. Uh, ESC is a bit more open. Uh, Acon and Speedix all look good. The new Timo looks good as well. But as far as flight controllers go, these are the three that I would pick um, that all have a nice low noise profile but have the have adequate gyro filtering um, on their electrical circuits and uh, perform pretty well. So. With one of those flight controllers, you can run the provided tune, which also includes the uh, VTX table suitable for the uh, Crossfire, uh, for not Crossfire, for the TBS Nano 32 Pro. Drop into the CLI, type save. All right, now that that's done, we can go down to our tuning tab and have a little look at it this is all looking pretty good uh, yeah all the settings are in here that you needed current setup one thing that's missing is the rates uh, you will need to put your own rates in uh, there are two kinds now you've got beta flight and actual are the two ones that most people are using now actual rates are meant to be really good but I have yet to try them uh, personally I'm using beta flight rates um, if you're not sure uh, what rates to run, mm, you don't want acro rates for a racing quad, like, you know, somewhere around the 400 degrees per second, three, 350 to 500 degrees per second is, is plenty. And I do recommend a little bit of expo. Right. So, uh, this is for someone else. I'll just drop their rates and and, and settings a bit later on. But um, yeah, there's the rates, and then over here we have our filtering setup. Um, this is again custom tune. Works with these quads in this configuration. The squish does have a slightly different tune um, to the other two variants, the hybrid and the X. Uh, but yeah, alrighty. And we've also got here, we're going to go to our receiver tab and we're going to get our radio. Power up our radio. Tango on, grab a battery. This flight controller doesn't power your quad via uh, the USB, doesn't power the RX by USB. So. And we should see all of our, all of our uh, things work in there, all of our um, uh, sticks are working properly. Now uh, the last thing we need to do, the only thing we need to do on this page is we come down here to derivative filter type and make that a, a PT1, sorry. We hit save. 
Now the next thing we can go down is to modes. At the moment we don't have the mode set up, so we need to do that while we've got the uh, transmitter connected. All right, so let's add your arm switch. There we go. Basically, you hit add, and we want a beeper. Angle. All right, add range for beeper. Select the switch you want it. Position the middle of the... Uh, select the uh, position you want it in as well. So there's my beeper set up. Black box is going to be set up on box two. First position, so that's good. Flip over after crash, turtle mode. We're going to set that up on ox 2 as well, but in the third position. That's perfect. And launch control. Useful feature for racing. Again, third position on ox 3. That's them done. Press OK. Uh, we don't need the radio on anymore. We turn it off. There we go. Unplug the quad. Um, down here to the OSD. You can set your OSD up however you like. Again, this is for someone else. I will drop their settings in. Um, I do recommend things like cell voltage, uh, average cell voltage and amps. Um, and your warning, uh, everything else after that is kind of arbitrary. Um, also, let's check our video transmitter. All right, what we need to do, again, it'll need power. If the video transmitter is connected, it will say device ready. Uh, we're gonna go down here to Fat Shark. Channel one. Sorry, not Fat Shark Race Band, channel one, and set the power level to 25. Um, all right, that's all good. Set that up and we're going to hit save. Alrighty. Last thing we're going to make sure we've got set up is the black box. Now we want to use the onboard flash. We want to set it to 2K and gyro scaled. Um, and use it if you, when you need to. At the moment, uh, the logging will have some impact on um, system performance. Um, it's being improved. Uh, there are improvements coming to it. Um, but there's no need to run logging if you're if you're not you're not uh, tuning the quad, basically. Um, I think that's about it. So once you put your rates and everything in, let me press save again, save and reboot. Once you put in your rates and your uh, and your OSD settings and stuff, pretty much take the quad out and uh, give it a fly. See how you go. Right, the last. The, uh, the last part of the setup we're going to do here is the ESC setup. Um, we need the BL Heli 32 uh, interface, the latest version, uh, which can be found from the um, the BL Heli 32 GitHub page. Uh, if you're not running the latest version, the um, uh, the software will give you the option to go and find it. First thing we can do is select uh, USB mode. Make sure you don't have B defined on. Otherwise, Beta Flight will auto grab the flight controller and you won't be able to connect to the ESC uh, to BL Heli. So hit connect and then plug in the battery. We're going to do a read setup. Alrighty, now this is already being set up, so here are the settings and changes we need to make. We want to change the ramp up power from 50% down to 25. This reduces the chance of burning out the uh, ESC uh, and turtle moding and uh, when your props are stuck on the high high power sort of high kV success motors the ramp up power doesn't need to be so low it's um a lot of these settings are for uh, back in the day 4s or 3s even setting setups so uh, the second one we're going to change here is motor timing from 16 to 23 don't use auto timing it uh, it chews up um, CPU power on the actual ESC um, and uh, is not as a, not as good at preventing desyncs as just pushing the timing. 
above 25 degrees, you are going to get more performance out of your motors, but it's going to come at a cost of the efficiency. So sort of 22 to 25 is the is the uh, recommended uh, settings for timing. And then PWM frequency. So the lower you can run this, the better, down to 24. But on these smaller 20 by 20 ESC setups, I've found that a lot of a lot of setups, certain motor motor ESC combos just won't run 24 very nice, very happily. So uh, 32 is the good middle ground. We set that, and then you would do a right setup, and it would um it would write them to all ESCs. The other thing we needed to do for this particular setup was change the motor direction on two and three. So if you deselect motor one, you now have control individually of motor three. Motor two, sorry. So we reversed that one, and then we did the same thing on um, motor three. Now, when you you make a change, whatever it is, you have to also hit right setup before you go and do the next one. And again, we will change that right setup. We're done. Hit check. Yeah, after that, uh, it'll make sure a little bit of a Run through revision 32.7 is the RP, the the current stable RPM uh, hex, so that's good, uh, and that's it really. Test that your motors are all spinning in the direction you want them to, uh, which you can do in the motor tab here, or you can do it in in, BL, in um, beta flight, and uh, that's it. You're pretty much your little quarters pretty much now ready to go fly.